Self-Publishing Podcast, episode number 43. Welcome to the Self-Publishing Podcast, where if you want something done right, you've got to do it yourself. And now, here are your hosts, three guys who sometimes use their powers for good instead of evil, Johnny, Sean, and Dave. Hey, and welcome to the Self-Publishing Podcast, the podcast that's all about how to get your words out into the world without contending with agents, publishers, or the other gatekeepers in traditional publishing. I'm Johnny B. Truant, and my co-stars are Sean Platt and David Wright. Um, Dave holding up the proof version, uh, the proof of Monstrous, or the actual official... It's the actual copy. You can go out and buy it right now for like a zillion dollars. <laughs> what, what is the... Um, I, I mean, now I know the deal is different because it's, it's a, um, a 47 North book, but do you know how that like what if you sell a print book what's the price of the print book typically compared to the ebook and what's the author royalty percentage situation uh, I think author royalty is one of those things we can't talk about because of contract uh, but maybe a create space book do you have any experience with that uh, I don't remember what it is because we barely sold any uh, hold on I'll tell you what the uh, print cost is uh, it, it was a bit pricey in my opinion yeah especially because it's really thin it looks like a weekly reader <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's trash our books. <laughs> I have fond memories of Weekly Reader. I loved Weekly Reader. I used to draw really gross shit in them. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the, Shocking. The, the yeah. paperback is... Uh, hold on. Let me see if that's a sale price or regular price. Fourteen ninety five regular price. Uh, Z, I think, was a little cheaper. Z is actually ten seventeen, so they have that marked down. Um, so maybe they'll mark down monsters too once it's off season. Is it so? That's how many um, volumes is that in monsters? Is that four or six? Monsters is six how many episodes. episodes? But it's six episodes. But they're okay. um, they're they're ten thousand word episodes. So they're a little shorter than our normal stuff. Well, they're between ten and twelve. They're not ten on the dot. So okay. Well, that's yeah, a, but some of them are some of them are like ten thousand and small. Four. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but the the ebook is one ninety nine. Uh, it will be three ninety nine once it's off season, uh, which should be I don't know any day now. So it, it's, it's significantly it's cheaper to buy the ebook. But if you want the hardcover on your or not the hardcover but paperback on your shelf, then it's it's worth it. I think there's some books I like that. Like I just read a book the other uh, day this weekend. Every day, I fucking love. You it. read that entire book already? Already. <laughs> wow, Dave recommended that to us, and I. I have it, and I know Sean got it, and I haven't even cracked it yet. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I have been reading Unicorn Western through lot one so that I can get it ready for print. <laughs> okay, that's. Fu I was just gonna say I've been reading White Space, but I'm like I don't want to say I've been reading my own shit. <laughs> but oh, I, I have to read White Space this week, but I didn't actually have it on my Kindle when we were away this weekend, and I couldn't sleep, uh, so I was like up, and I I had to read something, so I had that on my Kindle every day by David Levitan. Uh, or Levithan, I'm not sure how you say it, but I read, I read, I fucking love it. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I'd buy that. I'd buy that in hardcover and put that on my shelf. Um, Dave and I have to start um, White Space next week, and um, it's weird to read something that you wrote like a year or more before because it's like you forget stuff, and um, I mean, I, I, Dave can always be counted on to have children in jeopardy, and this book definitely. <laughs> <laughs> that, um, but but a lot of it just I, surprised me. I'm really 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 excited to um, to start writing White Space again. It Which, uh, what I found is, and this is actually kind of pert, uh, you know, relevant to the topic at hand, which is going to be well. Let's story. not go there then. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, I have a bunch of uh, voicemails to play first, but I'll just tease this: is that I, I was worried in one, in Unicorn Western one, that we would have said things that were inconsistent with what happened in 3, uh, or that we, we're get, maybe more were going to happen in 4. I didn't think we'd actually gone inconsistent yet. I don't but think I thought we had I mean, anything. Did we? Have you found anything? Seems like we're consistent. Okay, well, it's a good thing you interrupted, because I wasn't going to finish that sentence or anything. Like <laughs> that. But, <laughs> but I... <laughs> basically, um, I, I, did, I found that we did it rather well, and there, were, there was stuff... The one thing that we did that, that bugged me just a little bit, and I, I'm, ch I'm actually changing it, and I'll, I'll update a new file on all this, is that in the beginning we referred to turkey pie and beer, and we've changed oh, that to apple, apple brew. brew. I yeah. love apple brew. <laughs> beer in There's, a kid's book? <laughs> well, apple... Well, you, could, 
Yeah, oh, they Harry drink Potter beer. Harry Potter? What the hell? Like, I didn't read Harry Potter. Yeah, but you don't pretend the grown-up world doesn't exist in a kid's book. I always pretend grown-ups don't exist. Kids know what beer is. Like, that's you know, talking down to them if you don't have something like alcohol in a... In a you just have a rape right gang. Well, we gang. have rope gangs. <laughs> the rope gangs are like rope ninjas. They're able to like catch bullets with their ropes and shit. Yeah. It's going to be so stupid. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Awesomely stupid. I want that as a quote on your cover. Hey, I love. No, no, uh, you're. The, the, I want the quote on the cover to be something like, "What is this stupid shit?" or something like that. From, or I have no best. Book. I have no. Oh, that's true. I have no. But you, we do have one, and I remember. I give you awesomely stupid. You can use it. Well, no, you said I have no vested interest in your stupid unicorn story. That might make a good one. That's a bit long for a cover. Dude, right. No, that's awesome. It could be on the back. I love. Have you no seen? front for me, buddy. <laughs> Have you seen uh have you seen Garrett's review of Lot One? Yes. Very, that's very a, good. Yeah, that's an awesome review. I love that review. Cool. What was the I tweeted a review that I really liked the other day. I, I guess I think it might have been for a fat vampire book, but I We should take the time and find it. Myself. I'm sure our listeners will love that. <laughs> well it, it, and what's funny is by the way, this is actually going to be relevant in a weird way, is I think it's is it next week? I think. We're gonna. Um, we're having on. Um, I hope you guys remember. I emailed you about it. Cliff Ravenscraft is the podcast answer man. If you listen to that podcast, to talk about podcasting for for writers. Cool. Because so we originally started this as yes, we wanted to share. Yes, we wanted to to mastermind and brainstorm. But we uh, also it was going to be part of our platform. And what I found is that uh, a lot of the reviews mention that I you know I found Johnny through his podcast or for Unicorn Western I've been listening to to you know Truant and Platt talk about this or that and there's a lot of um people that are listening to these shows that are buying the books so they're I, still works. buying the books after listening to the show <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not wow <laughs> so anyway oh I have gotten uh some hate finally <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> yeah. So I got. Um, Was it my email? <laughs> I got. Uh, Dear Johnny, please stop stealing my ideas. I got two one star reviews on Fat Vampire, and I got one on the Bialy Pimps. Ouch. And they didn't bother me. Well, I, the, the Bialy Pimps one bothered me because it knocked me down from all five stars totally solid. Oh, yeah, we've had that. I hate that. <laughs> like, I don't like, care about what they're saying. I care that now it's not shaded. I'm like, oh! You asshole. Yeah. So, and it didn't, they didn't bother me, but um, I was still like... Well, we've had a couple where um, where we have really good reviews. We're all five shaded, and then we'll get a one star that's like, this isn't available in my area. And I'm like, <laughs> really? Really, you dick? <laughs> so that's not cool. So I have many voicemails, and this I'm not going to play them all because then it'll be voicemails the whole time. And That's and fine by I, me. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I want to talk about outlining and story architecture for selfish reasons, which I will go into. Um, but it'll be somewhat useful maybe to you guys too, and that would be a bonus, right? So, hey, if um, anybody wants to leave um, a review on um, yesterday's Gone Season 1, that'd be awesome. Because right now we're stuck at 420, and it's making me miss California. Oh, my God. <laughs> what a t- wow. It's like he's been waiting with that scripted to shoehorn it in. I think Garrett sent him to him. <laughs> hey, use this line, Sean. It'll kill. <laughs> yeah, well, and plus, I want to punch you in the face a little bit for 420 reviews. Yeah, that's awesome. That is pretty awesome. You know right. what's funny? We got a hundred. We've had a hundred, and we were at like under three hundred for a long time, and then we got a hundred since the beginning of the year because of the deal of the day. I think the deal. Okay, I was going to ask what you attributed to, but I guess. You and just and I'm that surprised that. that the deal of the day netted us so many positive reviews. I figure all the people finding us there'd be more hate, but knock on wood, it hasn't happened so far. Yeah, and that was one of those rare things where I was actually as pessimistic as Dave. Like, I, I, I actually did think we'd get a bunch of one-star reviews after that. But if anything, our ratio has gone up a tiny bit, which is cool. All right, let's get to the question. Stop rambling about our reviews. Well, I, I, let me just say one quick thing about that because it, it, isn't about reviews. it isn't about reviews. It's relevant to everybody listening. And that's that... So we, you mentioned 420 reviews for these guys. My highest book has... 66. And, and that's uh, like I'm very Dude, pleased that was with 66. Really respectable. No, no, I'm 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 not bitching about it, but my point is that it took me a while to get to there 
And then when you hear 420, I'm like, oh, well, that dwarfs my number. But what it is, and this is like the, this is the secret, okay? Remember we had CJ Lyons on, and she said step two in her formula was to wait for yeah. your work to find an audience? Yeah. That's actually true. Like, I knew it was true at the time. I think we all knew it was true. But just to remind everybody that time is the most important ingredient. Like, Unicorn Western, I think, is so kick-ass, and we... We we're releasing them fast, and we're going to release them faster. They're going to start coming every other week in like a month or two. Man, I don't remember. And I think it's epic, and I look at it, and I'm like, oh, well, Unicorn Western 2 and 3, they have two reviews each. And I'm like, ah, oh, and they aren't selling as well. And I'm like, oh, well, because they're newer. That's it. They're yeah, newer. it's just a time. Just I'm a just going to tell you one thing real quick. There is a Z2134 came out either right before or right around the same time as a book called Apocalypse Z. Actually, it's right before Apocalypse Z. I remember seeing Apocalypse Z. Apocalypse Z is a nice story. It's it's a slower story. Uh, I With like it. I, I didn't finish it yet, but but I like it. it it's, it's very well written. But we have 150-some reviews for Z, 2134, and Apocalypse Z, which came after us, has 1,312 reviews. So wow. that's humbling. <laughs> Well, now see, what would you, do you have any guess as to what might that might attribute well, to? Uh, as a cat. Word, word of mouth, uh, it, it is a translation from a Spanish version of a series, so there might have been a built-in audience. Uh, but definitely, word of mouth, I think, is really good on the book, and also uh, it was also you know deal of the day and stuff like that. So they had more uh, promotion. I don't think we had a deal of the day on uh, Z, but we I did. Yeah. I don't know if this was a deal of the day or it was some sort of featured thing, but it, it did get a little more promotion, I believe. But I, I think, you know, it, it merits all the reviews. I'm not saying, you know, it's out of luck or anything. No, I, t I totally get what you're saying. How do you get deal of the day, by the way? Is that something where they just tap you on the shoulder and say, we'd like to do deal of the day? They yeah. said, do you want to do it or not? Like, I'm going to say no. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's, um, what, what's, what's interesting actually about this is Amazon has a deal of the day kind of committee that has nothing to do like like 47 north has nothing to do with the deal of the, the day thing because we actually sent an email asking about it and like um, hey thanks for helping us get kindle the other day and like we had nothing to do with it dude. yeah it's, it's it's totally totally independent and i think that they're just i mean you think about it amazon just wants their buyers to be happy so they're going to pick projects or i mean they're going to pick books that um readers like you know so there's got to be a high rate you know it's not just the number of reviews that something has i think they really p care about things like ratio right so how many buyers to, what's the buyer to reviewer ratio i've seen and, a few kindle daily deals that had you know very few reviews actually less than 50 i think uh, yeah but maybe maybe <clears throat> it's like four percent of people review which would be huge right i had yeah, some huge percentage like of that vampire they need to hook me up <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think that that's that's one of the things that made yesterday's gone um, appealing was that I think our ratio is probably pretty good for people who buy to people who review, but you know, we straight up ask for it. So a lot of traditionally published books they, they don't necessarily ask because they're not as hungry as we are. All right, what's the question right. for this? Yeah, let me let me play some of these and then uh, then we'll talk. And I, by the way, I'm not going to get to them all, so I'm sorry. We, we could do a Q and A show, but I. We got to talk. I want to talk about this, damn it. So we'll just. Some of you may have to wait a little. None of these are like just I'm call, hanging off a ledge. Call Johnny, call Johnny personally. He'll answer all your questions. Yeah, go ahead. My number is. <laughs> what's Whitney's number? Do we know it? <laughs> okay, so. Uh, I know Dave's. Uh, Do you want that? <laughs> Bastard. All right, so here's, uh, here's Carlos with two questions. I don't remember what they are, but there are two of them. So here we go. Hey, guys. What's up? Uh, my name's Carlos calling from San Antonio, Texas. Uh, I just had two quick questions. Uh, hopefully they're quick. Uh, one, um, I've never really read so much just because I kind of grew up on movies and wanted to be more of like a screenwriter. And uh, I just kind of fell into the passion of, you know, writing novels now. So, I mean, I've been reading up on it a lot, listening to you guys and everything. And I did read Stephen King's On Writing. Um, so that gave me a great idea of, of how to, to, the process of writing, but I still kind of like, I don't know, I feel like I haven't read enough to write something good yet, and I mean, I, I try writing daily, um, it doesn't work out as much, and so I guess just advice, 
would be like for those like should for those like me maybe who haven't wrote as much, should I just like spend six months to cram the fuck on every book I can read, you know, or should I just knock at it and just still just keep writing, you know, the novel idea I have right now? Um, that's one question. And then the other is, um, how, how would you guys approach, I guess, like, when you're introducing a character or, like, a scene, like, would you, like, do you guys look at, like, okay, I want, like, first things first is I'm going to introduce, like, his physical features, then maybe, you know, uh, psychological aspects to the character. Like, when you guys introduce certain characters, do you guys kind of go like that? I know that I'm asking you if it's a little bit formulaic, and I know that that kind of goes against maybe, you know, what Stephen King says on, our, on writing, but, like, do you guys kind of have, like, a process, like, okay, I'm introducing Ted, and Ted looks like this, and Ted thinks like this, and Ted feels this, or, or you know, something like that, just because I have trouble with that sometimes when I'm, I'm trying to write the scene, it's like, and maybe it's just that I don't know the characters well enough, I, I'm not sure, but, um, yeah, if you guys can kind of maybe address that, if you guys want, uh, really, um, but I uh, love the show, listen to it a lot, self-publishing podcast, and Better Off Undead, so, um, I'll keep listening, thanks guys. Oh, well, fuck it, I don't want. <laughs> Okay, so um, you guys, you guys want to uh, yeah, go? Yeah, yeah. Re- re- read the hell out of the books. Uh, uh, read, read the hell out of books first of all, and, and then um, st- study the books that you're reading that you really like that are really successful, and, and see what they did right. And, and you can sort of at first you'll sort of be imitating a, a style, but as you do so and read other sorts of work. Uh, your own style will start to come out of it. But you, you definitely need to learn the form, uh, and the best way to do that is by reading and writing a lot. But if you're not reading before you're writing, then I, I think you'll have a problem. I, I don't know that I would, I would say that you need to, like, cram, though. I, I mean, it, it sort of he sort of made it sound like I have two projects. One is reading and one is writing. <clears throat> Should I jam in all my reading now? I, I wouldn't do that. As a matter of fact, I find that reading and then writing... I don't do this actually very often, but when I do, if I read something and then I write shortly thereafter, like in the same day, uh, it actually helps me with sort of the rhythm of it. But a lot of that is just time put in and practice. Uh, that's just, I don't think it's the sort of thing you can cram. You, you just get an ear for it. Buy, buy, buy Austin Cleon's book. Um, what is it? What's it called, Sean? Which, which book? The one you sent me. Oh, the um, art, art of stealing. Uh, uh, no, great artist steal. I okay, think. buy buy that book because he has something. Oh, in no, there. it's called Steal Like an Artist. I can see. Steal, like, steal he, like an artist. He has something in there which actually addresses this, where he, he actually talks about a method of, uh, you know, studying the books, uh, cramming so to speak, uh, be, before you actually try writing. Uh, Here, check that book out. Here's the thing: you you can't you you can't cram a lifetime's worth of reading into six months and say, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm ready to write now, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna cram it. I, that's not realistic. What you gotta do is use the assets that you already have. You've watched a lot of movies because you wanted to be in film. That's great. That's an asset. That's an asset that a lot of more literary writers probably don't have. And that's a good thing. So use that. No I, I, I disagree. I've seen I seen a lot of people try to write that are not very familiar with books and the writing comes off horrible the tense is all fucked up well, you need to I, have a basic I agree with that but I don't think he should cram six months you know well, no, no, in no, no. reading. what he needs to do is use what he has develop his voice and from now on pay attention don't cram in books but really when you're but reading you, ha- you do have to read attention. you can't avoid that step yeah but and, I don't and, but there's a difference yeah, between and give reading yourself and permission cramming. to have a back and forth too yes you can you can uh it's not read either a little, or. Write a little, read a little, write a little. Right. And well, but I guess what I'm saying is you, you, you will write something and then you will read something and it will clang back to something you wrote and you'll remember how you did it differently. Yeah. And then you'll write something and it'll be a little different. And it's like a give and take almost. Basically, read uh, more read, books differently now. D- uh, yeah. Once you start writing, I, I do too. I'll never read a book like I did back when I, I, you know, I don't binge read like I used to. But when I do read now, um, it's with a different eye. It's with a different brain because I'm a different person who does a different thing with my day each day, which is right. You have to write a lot and you do have to start reading. I don't think, I don't think cramming is the wrong way to think about it because 
you want to absorb the books. You want to pay attention. Now, yeah, if you think a books is something that you have to cram for and you don't really like, you probably shouldn't be writing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I agree with that. As far as your other question, I don't think there's an order to it at all. It depends on the scene. Sometimes, nor do I. You know, you're, you're not like, okay, now I've got to describe this guy. Like, you you want to just drip into the scene. So, if somebody's, I, I don't think. I mean, I'm. I, I don't. When I'm writing, and I, I imagine this is the same for Dave. It's not like we have to say, okay, now we have to describe John Conway. It's just you find a natural way without even thinking about it of telling the scene, okay, well he, you know, swept his brown hair from his head. Like, it's not like you're spending time to necessarily describe him. You're just describing him naturally when appropriate. Same with what's going on in their head. If you, if you're saying, okay, now it's time to tell the reader everything he's thinking, you're approaching it in the wrong way. And that's something you learn from reading. And I just like to I just like to interrupt by saying Zach Bolger just left the 421st review on yesterday's gone. So thank you, Zach. <laughs> the, um, High the, five, Zach. The the thing about um, so Stephen King says that description should wait. Start. Were you looking at our review page right now? No, I, I was looking at Twitter. Oh, all right. <laughs> because you are rambling. Who says it doesn't? Who said it doesn't derail the show? The um, that Stephen King says that description should start in the writer's mind and finish in the reader's. And I totally oh, I like that. agree yeah, with that. That's so awesome. basically the idea is that um, we he should write books or something. That's a good quote. He should. He should <laughs> write books. I don't. I actually don't do a ton of description. Um, I consider description to be an as-needed thing. So in Fat Vampire, you know that Reginald is a fat guy, but you don't know whether he's got a mustache. You don't know the color of his hair. I a realize that. I, <laughs> right. I um, I I forgot to mention um how old he was until like the third book, and I was like, 42. oh, I guess he's... <laughs> I made him thirty. I made him thirty-eight, Dave. Made him thirty-eight forever. Okay. And um, but I don't. I think that that's the sort of thing that like you will know. You can insert your own. It allows you to see yourself in the world of the fiction better, and then you are less um. You're less in the in the writer's vision. I don't know. It allows you to step you into your the role. Own. You exactly. You immerse yourself more fully in it. So if I'm, if it's if it's instrumental, like we we needed a description of Clint because we wanted him to be this, you know, dirty, dusty gunslinger. So his skin is like leather and all this stuff. Um, so that sort of thing was relevant. But a lot of the details are not relevant. Like we have a character. Uh, we never described Teddy. You know, Teddy the kid. He's just no. A kid. We just let you fill in. He's a kid, but we all have our own image of what Teddy looks like. And I, that's pretty I, easy. Yeah. I like using shorthand. You know, it, say somebody looks like a, a walking rock or something. Just something that quickly yeah. sets up what it, and let the you know let the reader go from there. One thing Dave and I do uh, actually kind of a lot. I, I I noticed it in in white space because I laughed out loud a couple of times where a character will. Um, nickname another character. Sawyer and Lost does this all the time. You know, he, he nicknames a character and if it's a if it's kind of a pop culture type nickname, we, you can immediately associate what that character looks like without having to describe them at all. And I think we all have a perception of what a certain type of person looks like too. There may have been somebody who's a wise ass in our past. And so if you, if you have a character who's a wise ass, you're going to supply right. your own yeah. description of that person rather than being saddled with the writers. So I think we all are agreeing on minimalist description. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So let's uh, let's go ahead and this one's from Roland about awards. I don't really re totally remember this one. So here we go. Hey guys, uh, great show. I have a question for the uh, self-publishing podcast. And my name's Roland, by the way. Um, I was wondering if uh, there are any uh, self-publishing uh, awards. I see a lot of them on the internet when you kind of do a Google search. And uh, I was wondering if any of them are worth submitting. Some of them seem like they're free. Some of them seem like they're huge. Some of them seem like they're just starting out. And um, just wondering your opinion on those. If they, uh, they help and if they get you a lot of attention and or any that are particularly a waste of time. Thanks, guys. Looking forward to the next show. I think they're all a waste of time. Um, yeah, personally, I, I, maybe they're not. You know, maybe you'll get the right attention on some of the bigger ones, like maybe the digital book world or something like that. But personally, I don't really care about um, what any group says about our work. I care about what readers think about our work. The only, the only 
the only awards I care about are the five star reviews we earn from readers. Like that matters to me. Um, I don't really care. I mean, I didn't care about grades in school. I certainly don't care about awards that I'm. I I, I I can see the appeal that somebody might think if they get an award, all of a sudden a whole bunch of people will find them, discover them, and start reading them. It, but that's it might not be how people dis- No, it might be yeah. possible with the biggest of awards. But for the most part, um, I I think. I'll, it's it's a waste of time to pursue it, especially if you have to pay for it. To pay to submit is is bullshit. And I think people that have awards where you have to pay to submit, they're fucking preying on you. Yeah, I agree with that. And I, I think for me, I don't that's not the kind of val I do care about validation, but I care about it directly from readers. I don't care about it from a committee. It's well, like a child beauty pageant where you have to pay to, you know, get yeah. your child in a stupid pageant. Fuck yeah, that. and I'll I'll share a little bit of an experience too, is I actually and I sent it to you guys, uh, I don't know if you remember it. There was a thing that pitched me on submitting the the Bialy Pimps for mm-hmm. an award, and it was somebody who I at least thought knew me. I don't know whether they actually did or not. And so I sent it to these guys. I was like, well, "Would you would you do this?" You know, and um, because the prize was publicity, basically, it was like you get this, you get this. So. And it was, they did ask for money, but it was like really cheap. So I said, well, what the hell? I'm willing to throw this away. I remember now, that. Now, what, what happened with that is I didn't win, and here's my experience. I was pissed off that I didn't win. <laughs> and I, was off, I was pissed off and indignant. So I was, <laughs> I was a cocksucker of a loser. Like I, was like, I was like, I hadn't read any of the other books. And I'm like, oh, these stupid sons of bitches. Like I'm, my book is really funny. And so that's the grief that I got out of this was you're putting all of your uh, validation in the hands of one or several people who may be totally wrong for your book. Yeah. If you distribute your book on Amazon via free promo or not via free promo, uh, you're going to get sort of a you're going to get a lot more people, and then you'll get maybe a more realistic perception of people who may or may not like your book. Whereas, like, they may be really literary, and um, or and maybe your book isn't literary, or they may have a certain taste, and yours isn't the same. And or somebody else it. paid more to get their yeah. name to win. Okay, yeah. Here, here's the thing. Okay, it's you, the reason to do that is for discoverability, right? Because you want more eyeballs on your work. You want you want to get known. But most readers, that's not how they're finding books. The, the readers who are ravenous readers, they're on places like Goodreads or they're on Amazon, and you you want to cater to those people. Those Goodreads and, people piss me off sometimes. And, <laughs> and there's only so much time that you have, and if you have to devote attention to trying to win an award that's less attention that you're putting into just building your name where readers hang out and and that i just think that that's it's where one you're, person's opinion yeah i just think uh, awards I, I don't see i don't see the value it doesn't mean my mind couldn't be changed but you know actually okay this is funny <laughs> uh cindy and i were talking about this in the think tank yesterday <laughs> <laughs> We were, we were talking about Newberry. Oh, for, for those that don't know, the think tank is Sean's tub. Yeah, and, and Cindy and I spend time in the think tank every day. And, we and were he talk- spends lots of time alone in the think tank. Don't forget that part. No, it's the ha- it, 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 my bath comes in half parts. Dude, I have a hard time mocking him when I realize there's a naked woman in there with him. I just got to say that, just for the record. Yeah, yeah. He's alone with a rubber duck, though. I have no problem. Yeah. You know what? There is a rubber duck in there, but it's because... <laughs> <laughs> It's because it's not a little yellow one. It's like a rubber like rubber duck, like a sex doll. No, it's it's on Saturdays. Our children like to take baths in our big tub, and so they. My son has a rubber duck that he likes. All right, so fuck y'all. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> ramble uh, on. Uh, no, we were talking about the Newberry Award winners, and um, and I I just like I just. She, she showed me this one book, and I don't even remember the title of it, so I, I won't shit on it. But I will say that one of the books um, that got me writing was five years ago, before I was writing anything, um, there was a Newberry Mind Award. Comp. <laughs> there was a Newberry Award winner, um, and I started reading it, and I was shocked. Like, I finished the book, and I'm like, oh, wow, this book is not very good at all. And yeah, it was... It was one of those books that I thought, you know what, if this won an award, like, where's the bar? And I, I it got me, you know, because I want to get drunk. It got me, it got me writing in a way that great books couldn't. Because when I read a great book, or at least back then, when I read a great book, I was so removed from it. I thought I could never do that. Yeah, they I intimidated could, me. I yeah, could Stephen never King write. talks about that too. 
You know, and then I read a shit book that got an award. <laughs> I mean, like the best award you can get in children's literature. But that's what we were talking about, that the, the books they award are safe. They're not good books. They're safe books. And that doesn't mean there aren't some good books there. I'm not shitting on the Newberry in that way. I'm just saying it's not really the best book for children's literature. It's yeah. just, it's the safe one. And, and so what's the point? Like, I wouldn't choose what I want my daughter to read <laughs> from the Newberry. So anyway, that's how I feel about awards. The end. I just gave Sean the let's hurry it up gesture. Do we have Are more questions, sure? Johnny? Wait, no, Johnny, I do. I have a shitload more questions. Yeah, Are That's you sure you want to talk the plotting? Because we don't have that much longer. We could do... <laughs> God damn it. Well, okay. you're, you're, just making you. me not, you're just making me okay. not play any more okay. questions. I've been waiting for this for a fucking month. Okay, here. I have a suggestion. Why don't we do a special episode of the SPP? We'll still bank it, but you'll get your stuff done. Because I know we have Cliff next week. So why don't we record two next week? So we can do your plotting one. I, I can't record at the normal time next week. It actually, it's convenient that we've moved it. Um, it's the problem it, is that we all like talking about writing. So when one of these questions gives us a prompt, we talk for twenty fucking minutes about. We it. buy. That was we, really we simple Sean. question. That was a really really simple question. Are the self publishing awards worth it? No. no. <laughs> but we talked for twenty fucking minutes about. It. All right, let's do one more question, and then I want to talk about this. So. All right. <laughs> All right, I actually think we've I actually think we've done this one, so I'm gonna play this one real quick. But I think I think we've already. Hey guys, my it. name's Mike. Uh, yeah, we done that one. <laughs> That's oh okay. Oh, now you're gonna make me start it over. No, I, I was kidding. Hey guys, my name's Mike. I think this is the uh, one that we asked Ed. Um, I'm hoping this will be a quick question and answer for you guys. <laughs> um, it's pretty select. Can I still offer my book on my site for free no, we didn't during the portion of time that it's not also being offered for free through Amazon, or is that kind of a all-encompassing thing where I can just never offer it uh, for free on my site oh. anymore? Um, I'm sure you guys have touched on this at some point, and while I love listening to every uh, episode, it doesn't really work well as a... Um, reference where I can kind of quickly go through and, and find my answer. So um, thank you very much. And uh, again, I really enjoy everything that you're doing. Take care. I thought that was the one for Ed. The answer is no, you can't. During no, the 90-day exclusive period, it can't be anywhere. I discovered that with the blog post, the universe doesn't give a flying fuck about you, that I put on Amazon as an afterthought. I'm like, oh, I'll make it free. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I still have it on my site, so I had to take it down. But after yeah, the exclusive is over, you can do whatever the hell you want. And maybe even before you start the exclusive, hey which guys, is what we've been talking about. Yeah. Yeah, they even have um, crawlers, right? So I think that's probably how they found Johnny is yep. the fact that it was you know, on the site and it's duplicate content is the way they saw it. Yeah, so there you go. All right, well, that was, that was, that was quick, so I'm happy. Um, Sean right, can so, pontificate. No, I can. I got another 23 minutes in me for that one. <laughs> Don't pontificate on that. Uh, okay, so today's topic is, is outlining and story structure. And the, I think that this is really, really important. I really do. Because I, by the way, I, I'm new to this in that since this podcast has been going, I have totally changed the way I do everything. I actually have a question about that for next week. Um totally changed the way that I do everything that I do in my writing, and so I have started appreciating the idea of an outlining, of having an outline, which I never did before. And so the, the story that I was telling these guys was that, uh, Sean, the way that we do Unicorn Western is that we just talk about it, and Sean comes up with all, all the best ideas, those are all Sean, and then he creates an outline for me, and then I just write what's in there, but they're very, very loose. So it's like a description will be epic battle ensues, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so like each chapter is literally, um, a pair, like on a page, it would maybe be, I don't know, uh, how, they're not big, right? The, yeah, it it, it amounts to 10%, basically. So a, a, a 25,000 word unicorn western is like a 2,500 word outline. Okay. And so I got really, really used to that, and we've done some just little side projects, basically the same thing. And then I started Fat Vampire 4 recently. After doing a bunch of Unicorn Western stuff, I hadn't written 3 for a while, and I was having a really fucking hard time with it. And because I thought that I was just sort of like by the seat of my pants. And um, what I've realized is I've gotten used to that, and it makes me move much, much, much faster. So if you're interested in writing fast, from my camp, one of the things is you know exactly what you're going to write first. 
And I wondered how you approach that, that because I don't know if you're just naturally good at it, Sean. Dave, I haven't seen your beats. I don't know if it's basically the same thing. But how do you determine what's going to happen that far in advance so that you can just rip through it? Um, I'll tell you how I, how I write. Um, well, I don't know. It depends who I'm writing with. So I do it differently all the time. Um, when I'm doing it start to finish by myself, like for example, last week I wrote a Dark Crossings story called Do Not Disturb that I, I, I like quite a lot. I'm, I, Dave's not read it yet. I'm really curious to see what he says about it. But it had, it had a few things that I, I had to be very careful with how I wrote it because it's, it's one of those stories where um, the information has to be delivered in a certain order. So that was kind of important. And I also... You know, I wanted to write the whole rough draft in one day. So I wanted to, you know, we've talked about that many times, how you write so much slower if you don't know what you're going to write, which is what you're struggling with right now. So I wanted to know ahead of time. And the way I did that was um, I basically divided, I pretended it was a much longer work than it was. Like most of our serials um, are six chapters for, for, for Dave and I. We, we tend to do things in six chapters. Um, I know Unicorn Western's always 12, which I basically just double up on the formula. Um, but, but with the six, it's, it's pretty easy. And what I do is I just figure that I start with um, kind of a goal, right? So everybody has to have a goal and you got to define what that a character is. A goal for the entire story? No, I, I, th I think of it as a scene to scene thing. Like, okay, this is, this is what the goal of this scene is. And then the next one is going to be um, kind of a reaction to that first scene. And then the next one is, is more run back to a goal. But I think that what you, what you kind of, what that you kind of want that constant give and pull. So you want to give somebody a reason to do something, have them do it, and then have either them or someone else react to that. And as long as you're kind of constantly going back and forth, it gives your story um, a very specific momentum. And what I do is I'll go through the entire draft. So I'll start and, and I just give like one sentences. Like this thing has to happen, this thing has to happen, this thing has to happen. And there will literally be, for each little section, it'll be three sentences. And then once I'm all through, I kind of have a really, really rough skeleton. And then I go out and I flesh those out. So when I go back to the top, that one sentence will turn into a paragraph. And I go through... And now I have, you know, uh, I would have, I would have 18 paragraphs. And then I go through one final third time and kind of just make sure that um, everything makes sense. And that usually the second time through, I'm getting a lot of ideas. It's starting to flesh out. And I make sure that those new ideas are there in the third draft. But by the third time I'm done, I, you know, I usually have about 10 to 15%. So, for example, this Do Not Disturb story was just under 10,000 words and my paragraphs amounted to 1,500 words. And um, it gave me a, a framework that I was able to get the whole rough draft out in a day. And it was a very messy, messy draft and it took a lot of you know, editing and polishing to get it in better shape. But, um, but that's just how I do it, straight, straight through. And that seems to work really well for most projects. But how do you know I wish I could give you an example. I wish I could tell you what's, but people may, you know, be reading the series and they don't want to know what what the issues are. But um, like you may know. Okay, so well, do you want to go into to say spoiler zone and just because no, the because more specific we are, the more helpful it's going to be. There's a it's a uh, I don't say I don't want to do that with especially with something that I'm working on live. But if I can I t can I dissect a, another book like. What, sure. What's a book yeah. that I can dissect? Like uh, anybody's book that I that we all would have read. How about The Shining? Since you have such a big fat heart on for that. Okay, Dave, have you read The Shining, or do you care? Does anybody care? Oh, I saw the movie. I haven't read it yet. But <laughs> okay. Ahead. Knock okay. Well, it, right. And so the, any spoilers that are for the <clears throat> book or if, if you haven't seen The Shining yeah. yet. <laughs> yeah. So we're okay, sorry. So, so you may know I have the equivalent of this. So I'm Stephen King, obviously, right? And uh, I'm <laughs> like. I want to write a story. It's about a haunted hotel. And in this book, I want to have the guy go crazy and um, attempt to kill his family and be foiled. So that's kind of where I started with this because I have a three-book arc, and I know exactly what I want to occur in each of the books. 
and it's about that specific. Uh, now, I'm, by the way, I've mostly solved this. I'm, I'm pretty good now, but it took me a lot of starting and stopping. So I want to have this haunted hotel where the guy goes crazy, kills his family, but that's kind of all I have. So then you're like, well, but you have to fill 450 pages or you have a story to tell, and you're going to find that story as you go. By the way, that's the piece I left out. So there's a lot, a lot of stuff in Unicorn Western that was not even indicated in Sean's original outline because it comes to me once I'm going. <laughs> that was Dave applauding. <laughs> Is, uh, but I need the prompts, and then I find the meat of the story. So if you're in that, and you just know you just want to have that happen, how do you decide you know, the events that occur in that story? Well, how I would you approach you that? I just think you need the the um I don't know I, I unless I misunderstood your question I feel like you just answered it because you have the major things that have to happen But it's no 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 I have a major thing that's the difference if you have six major plot points and you oh, know you can Oh well then them, you just go back to the beginning you just think okay what's the goal here and how would somebody logically react to that and that's why you start with single sentences and then you just kind of drill it down because it's the same thing. You, you, just like you find your story as you write it, um, you find your outline as you outline it. And Wait. so, what were you going to say, Dave? Uh, I, I was just going to say, when, when, when you know the goal, you know the roadblocks that would be put in place to prevent your character from achieving the goals. So, yeah. So you work backwards from there. Uh, a lot of times with scenes, I will think of... Uh, you know, I'll think of the end result, but I'll also think of like key key exchanges that I want in the book, uh, maybe even scenes, uh, powerful dialogue or whatever. And I'll actually like write a few scenes out and place them like on index cards. And, and it, this, some people like index cards, others, you know, maybe don't care. But uh, I, I like to arrange it to like kind of put everything in a in a structure before I you know begin the skeleton and the the draft that I'll actually be working on. Uh, do you around. think do you think your processes so Sean as somebody who's worked with both of us are your outlining processes you two Sean and Dave approximately the same or no totally different hmm. I'm yeah. slower Sean is faster yeah, how totally long does different. it take okay Sean unicorn western outline after our story meeting how long did that take you um anywhere from 2 to 3 hours and do you kind of sit there and ponder and do you have periods where you're like just kind of rubbing your head and you're like yeah, okay totally. I don't Totally. But I feel like the longer I spend on an outline, the faster I write. And, and, and also, there are times when I outline something and what I write is nothing like what I outlined. And that's not even the point. That's okay because I figure the story is going to find itself. The purpose of the outline isn't to give me a, a template for my story. It's, so, it's to not make me feel stupid when I sit down to write and I'm staring at a blank page. So what I mean by that is if I'm writing and I get to a point and I outline something the day before and all of a sudden that doesn't make sense for the story, that's okay because just by the fact that it doesn't make sense to the story, that means that something else makes more sense to me. So I already have that direction and I'm going. But, but that's always better than just not knowing and staring at the page. So for Do Not Disturb, there were a lot of things that was totally different. I tend to go on, you know, um, I digress a lot, you know. No! Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I'm the same writer as I am as a person. You know, I'll have one person, I'll just get in a conversation with another person or get on a sidetrack thought, and that's okay because I feel like that's where that story is supposed to go, and I'm I'm comfortable with that. But I'm not comfortable just sitting down at the blank page and just staring at it and waiting for inspiration or waiting to figure it out. I'd rather, I'd rather spend three hours outlining something and have it go nowhere. And, but I know I'll at least keep writing. And for me, part of my process is that in addition to outlining, I do go through it three times. I don't have a rough draft and a, and a polished draft. I have a raw draft and that raw draft is, is very rough sometimes. And, and there's, incomplete ideas and I'm, I'm okay with that. It's just about getting through it and knowing that once I'm done with that, my mind is turning the story and I'm going to find a better version of that story the next time through. How long does it, does it, does one of those take you, Dave? For an outline? Yeah. Like, For, do you spend the same basic question? Do you spend a lot of time with the outline? Just kind of like, Oh, you know, I don't know it, what to do here. Well, is it episode or season you're talking about? Episode, um, I think. 
Well, it, it, it's, it it's a little bit different because it would be much shorter, and I imagine a shorter work is a different outlining experience. Yeah, a shorter work is, I, I think, easier usually unless I wind up hating it midway, which happens often. Um, <laughs> but, but for a season, uh, first we have to figure out what the hell we're doing with the season, and then we kind of work around that and work backwards, forwards, and 20 different directions. Um, and, and like Sean, we'll, we'll start off with a different thing, like I said before. Uh, but then once once we start writing it, or once I start, if I'm if I'm the lead story person on, on that particular serial, uh, once I start, it's liable to go in many many different directions because I, I'm kind of a combination, you know, plotter and pantser. Uh, I'll start off with one thing, but you know. Into the story, I see. Well, this isn't really how the character would be. This isn't really what would happen. This is really stupid. Uh, you know, different things just, uh, you know, occur to me, and I change it. So uh, it, it takes me a while longer. Uh, short story, I'm a bit quicker at though. And th or that's th that's really the key. Like, you don't want to be an absolute plotter. It, you want the story to find itself. What 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 the kind of writer Dave is, I think, is actually an ideal where where he's kind of. Um, you know, half one way and half the other. And that's you really, kind of what I've settled into. Yeah, you really do want that. Um, but again, I think this is a, a case where collaborative writing um, makes the whole experience a little bit better. I'm wondering if that's part of it. I'm wondering if you and I, Sean, were having the same discussions and then I were writing the outline, if the experience would be any different. I'm wondering if it's the, collab the banging back and forth of ideas more Change than the actual... Change it up. Experiment. Well, yeah. Well, I wouldn't but want to I change love it up the on, way it is right yeah, now. <laughs> I, I would, I would change it up on a different project. I wouldn't change it up on Unicorn Western because, um, because I think it would change the way it sounds, and I think it, yeah. it sounds right right now. Um, but I would totally do that. On, I, I actually really like having stuff beat out for me, and, um, because. It's real, you know. It's it's that whole thing with with nonfiction. I think this is just stupid easy. You know, nonfiction is really linear, and you're answering questions. So that outline is really simple. You're you're breaking down. And if you have those same six chapters, um, it's 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 a very simple outline because you're saying, okay, we need to cover these main six points, and each of the six points have maybe six questions that need answering. So all you're doing is basically writing a long list of questions, and then you're answering those questions, and that's a rough draft. Um, you can do the same kind of thing with, with fiction, where you're basically just saying, okay, well, this thing has to happen. What would this person think? Um, how would they act? How would this person respond? And they give you prompts that you're basically answering in a storyteller's voice, and you will. I wonder if I'm maybe not giving enough respect to the outlining process. Like I'm wondering if I'm considering it a by the way because I'm greedy for word count, so I'm just shoehorning it in. I'm wondering if I should maybe devote several days to it. Um, I don't. I I would. I I used to not like outlining it at all. Now I think it's one of the most valuable things that I do. Yeah, I think I would have saved a ton of time because basically, I mean, I have a calendar here. I don't have my original timeline. But I thought that I was going to be done with Fat Vampire 4 last week. Yeah. Uh, and it, no. I'm going to be done, if I am if I keep going, I should be done on Thursday. Welcome so, to my world. Well, yeah, yeah you're, that's exactly, you're running into the same problem that Dave run, runs into all the time. And, and, and I think that that's a legitimate problem. Um, but for, for me, the way I solve that problem, because I'm the same as you, Johnny. I, I get greedy for word count. Like, I want to, I want to Roar, like a monster just yeah, well, I'm so excited time. to do Unicorn Western next <laughs> right so I, I totally get that and and the way I solve that problem is just muscling through the draft like I, I'll make sure I outline as well as I can but then it's it's that not second guessing it and knowing that the rewrite will make everything okay so if I give um, you know and and, and like you would be shocked at how terrible some of my first drafts are. They're really bad, but but it's they okay. have pink smoke in them, especially <laughs> the action scenes. Yeah, the action scenes are <laughs> terrible. <laughs> so, um, by the way, oh, yeah. big shout out to um, uh, uh, Paul Wolf who who sent me a, a link to a book on writing action scenes that I can't wait to read after I read White Space. Thank there you, you Paul. Um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so. Um, so, so yeah, there there are some really really bad first drafts. Sean, you should write a book on how to write picnic scenes, though. 
<laughs> that would kick ass. What we do is it like picking scenes in Birdemic. You can combine the two. The, I think that, I think that part of this is really actually pretty interesting. I think for any writer because we write in isolation, so we can talk a little bit about our own processes, processes. But you forget that um, you kind of I don't know. You start to think that there's one right way, and just knowing that other people, it's kind of like a share. You know, misery loves company. Like hearing that. So what you're talking about, Sean, writing a raw draft and then a rough draft, that sounds much, much worse to me than what I'm struggling with with the outlining because I produce, even now, even with them confused, I produce a pretty clean... I mean, you've seen my roughs. Like, yeah, your, your roughs clean. are very clean. Your roughs are very clean. And so if I step back and I say, well, the options are to do an entirely different draft where I feel kind of lost in the middle, which is maybe your equivalent of a raw uh, that sounds worse. So maybe just the fact that I know you have to give yourself yeah. permission to suck, though, isn't that yeah, what you always it, say? Yeah, but well, but, I do. But if I suck, then it's contagious. Like my suck right. spreads. If I get the suck out in the outline, the the better prose is, the better the subsequent prose is for me. Y yeah. So if you wrote a sense. sucky first draft, it would get worse on the second. It would feel. It would demoralize me. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, see, for me, it's part of the process because I feel like um, if, if, I, if I have three, if I'm not including the outline, I, and if there's just three drafts, although I think four is great, um, I, I really like it if I, on those times when I can go over something four times. And 19 is awesome. So, five. <laughs> <laughs> so if it, the first one is like just figuring out, you know, just saying it, just getting it from your brain onto the page, just saying it. The second time is um, is figuring out what you meant to say, and then that third time is saying it well. And for me, I like that process because I feel like if I if I I don't feel like I could really get my outline because I don't know what I want to say. I don't know what I want to say until I take those little roads that I didn't expect, and the characters say things I wasn't anticipating, and there are those digressions. That to me is part of the story. So I really like getting that permission to suck draft out and just knowing the, the hard part was back before I did give myself permission to suck and would spend longer on that first draft. And so Dave's on Twitter, you can tell. <laughs> no, I'm actually looking at the sales for Available Darkness to see oh, how our experiment's working. You fucker. <laughs> so, um, I know what you're going to say. Um, so I, I really, well, that's true. <laughs> so I, I really, I, I appreciate that as part of the process. It's almost like, yes, it's a much longer um, outline, that first one. If I consider the raw draft like outline 2.0, yeah, it's a lot longer, but I'm also writing it so fast that it's not that bad, and I feel like the end product is better, and I throw myself more into the story. So you do an outline, a raw draft, a rough draft, and then one or two redrafts. That's 100% correct, yeah. Uh, okay. The, see, now right there, it makes me say, because a lot of this, like, look, I'll admit it, a lot of this is writer's insecurity where I'm sort of like, this is wrong, because Unicorn Western feels Right. And when you get used to the feel of that, and I'm like, well, this is hard, uh, like difficult, and it hasn't been difficult. And so I, I guess just hearing that, well, okay, let me ask you this. Project to project. So um, I, I guess you can't really compare Yesterday's Gone and Unicorn Western because you guys are different. You're doing different things. But I'm just wondering, like, Yesterday's Gone is really sort of, sort of complicated. You need, uh, it's not Deus Ex Machina, but it there is that element of plotting where you need to have this happen, then this happen. You have events you have to hit. Whereas in Unicorn Western... And it's timelines that have to match up. Right. So is a project like that significantly different in the outlining phase? Yes. Absolutely. That's why I take so damn long, because yeah, every one absolutely. of our projects is like that. Yeah, yesterday, yeah, Yesterday's Gone is not a project I would want to... Dave and I were talking about this just, I think, yesterday. How we have... Um, there's, there's projects that, uh, like there's several books that I want to write that are not projects that I would want to write fast. They're projects I would more, the, the, the Western that started the whole Unicorn Western conversation um, is a Western I want to write someday that's a real Western. That's a complicated Western that has a lot of characters and blah, blah, blah. No unicorns? No unicorns. <laughs> or it, pink smoke? <laughs> but I won't do research for it. I'll have fact-checking, but I still won't do research. <laughs> but um, 
but th th it will be complicated and I don't want to I really want to be able to take a few months and just spend it on that I have several projects like that um, the the stuff that we do together Dave and I with the inkwell is complicated stuff that I wouldn't tackle on my own I really enjoy having a collaborator for that stuff with unicorn Western that is a project I could do on my own I wouldn't want to but I could because it's stupid. <laughs> there's just there's there, we don't have the same kind of story threads. There's not the kind of depth. I mean, I think I well, think there's and, and a story like that, you can say and a fucking bomb went off and six unicorns flew out. Like you can do that. You can't <laughs> do that with a lot of stories. No, we can't do that. We can't do that with white space, you know. It, I do it, want to do a fun story like that though. Yeah. I, I, I am a bit jealous that you guys are writing to such speed and yeah, and see, having and fun. Th this is this is this is It so sounds like you've been offered it many times though, Dave. <laughs> well, he, yeah, but he, I, I tend to overcomplicate every story. It, no matter how simple it is, I think, oh, wouldn't it be cool if this and this and this happened? Yeah, and Monstrous the brother was the really dead. And... <laughs> yeah, no, Monstrous is the best example because that was designed to be fast and funny and like only 10,000 word episodes <laughs> and no weird story threads. And I mean, by the end, we've got it going like all over, like through the woods to grandma's house. Like we just, it's, We're getting great reviews though. Well, if yeah. you guys, if you guys want to know details on the fat vampire thing, I can tell you off the air, but basically I think what I'm thinking is part of the problem here is I wrote three after writing the first unicorn Western as well. And so, and that one went, really pretty fast and my redraft was like nothing I was shocked I remember how, that I remember you saying that yeah it was like it was like first draft polish almost I mean it was damn close to that I've never done that <laughs> it's well it was it was and it was and I did redo a little bit but I mean shockingly little in the and, zone and I didn't have to rearrange things and uh, what I'm noticing with this one is I think that it feels it's not that it feels bad or hard it's that it feels bad or hard by comparison and okay. Well, here's a thought. Tightly, too. Let me let me just finish the thought really quick. It's 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 much more complicated than than the first one. It's I know I predict that Dave is going to laugh at my next sentence. It's there's a lot of politics in the <laughs> it, like it's a political novel in a way. Like there's an election and there's things that that have to occur. That there's a little bit of the the third one didn't have that. The third one is playground, and so I'm wondering if that's part of it too. I'm sure that's part of it. And also, you got to think, are you writing the right thing at the right time? Because I found that too. When, when, I'm, when I'm writing something that just feels right, that, okay, like this is what I want to write, it goes really, really fast. When I'm writing something, and I found this with work for hire all the time, this is actually the first time in my life that everything I'm working on is something I really, 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 really love and want to work on. So writing has never been easier for me. Um, when I was doing a lot of work for hire, a lot of SEO stuff, like, I mean, I could muscle through it. I get the word count. I can make the clients happy, but it was a little bit painful. And I think that's even true with fiction. If you're, if you're writing something and you're writing it to check it off a list so you can get to something else, then it's going to be a harder project a hundred percent of the time. I think, I, I think that mindset I think when you are writing the right thing, writing is easier than when you're writing the wrong thing and telling yourself it's the right thing. And, and that even goes into some of our story choices. Uh, like Available Darkness, uh, we were going to return to it earlier, but I wasn't ready yet. I, yeah. I was not in a space to write that yet. Yeah, that's, that's a very good example. And it's, it's, it's totally true. And, you know, for me, when there's something that... One of the reasons I really love our Dark Crossing series is because it's a diversion. You know, it's, it doesn't... All of our serials are serious, and they do um, they do require a lot of plotting and all of that. Where dark crossings are isolated, they're one little story. It's a ten thousand shot. Just go tell a story now, and you can revisit the world maybe someday, or probably not. And it's just that one story. And there's something really freeing about that. And where you have the problem with Fat Vampire Four is that you've already built all this whole world here, and you're going to have more to go after four. So it's a neither nor, you know, you're, you, there's, there's no big reward for finishing it. You're not wrapping up a, you know, right. a trilogy or anything. It's just, it's there. So part of you is probably anxious to get on with something else. 
um, and part of you is just a little bit lost in the plotting. And I think there's a lot of elements that, that make any piece of writing difficult. And if you don't have an absolute reason why that has to be done then, then maybe it's best to just set it aside and wait for the ideas to marinate because when the right ideas are there, you'll know it and the writing will come just easy. Uh, I should just probably... like sex. I should probably also clarify for anybody, uh, just to put this in perspective, I started this on, so Fat Vampire 4, I started it on either the 5th or the 6th of February, today is the 12th. And you're and, bitching? <laughs> well, exactly. So I guess what I'm saying is, I got used to writing, I mean, I, we've said it a few times, like we've been talking about, oh, I, I've been, I plotted out 7,500 words a day, I'm going to write. And so I get that in my head, and so I think that that's an issue when maybe it isn't. But I did spend several days spinning my wheels and saying this doesn't feel right. Uh, I finally hit a groove this afternoon where it's like, okay, now I got it. Now I got and it. And then you had to stop oh, for this good. dumb show. <laughs> I did, actually. I, I did stop for... No, I didn't stop for this dumb show. I started the, the, I'm for, at our, BOU. for our, <laughs> other, our other really stupid show, our stupider show. <laughs> Where we talked about pooping in sinks today. <laughs> this show actually has some, you know, usefulness to some people, but not better off undead. That that show is a nightmare. It really is a nightmare. We should really be ashamed. We should just stop doing it. We should double up on this one. <laughs> you don't really mean that, do you? Oh no. God, he'll be talking. He'll just be talking longer on the same question. Well, I could, I could do two self-publishing podcasts. The problem is that I don't want to take the time, but I could talk about this all the time. Yeah, I could too. It's not uh, uncommon for us to talk before and after recording the show yeah. nearly as much as we talk during the show. So, the director's um, cut. We could do cut. one show, um, one show that's just us and have guests more often too. I like yeah, but, a weekly guest idea. Well, the yeah, but see, I like the shows without guests, so that yeah, we weekly. Have I, 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 lo I love guests. I, I would say I, every I other love, week on guests at the most. Yeah, I think every other week, and again at the most, I would agree with that too. It must be hard being Dave because Sean and I agree on just about everything. So he's always outgunned. <laughs> I, I'm yeah. used to my genius being misunderstood. <laughs> Dude, that's a t-shirt. You need to wear that. <laughs> All right. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll close up, right? And um, anybody who submitted questions, again, it's just we, just we talk too damn much, so we aren't getting to a ton of them. Yeah, you should but find you... another self-publishing show to send your questions to. <laughs> yeah, well, unfortunately, we corner the market, so ha-ha. <laughs> sons of bitches no uh, we do have uh, several other questions and we'll, we'll get to them but honestly we have Cliff Raven's graph next week so we'll see if we even... if it's really pressing send an email via the website and, we'll and Dave will respond to yes. it <laughs> alright everybody so uh, we'll catch you next time